So now this next video will continue our look at the cerebrum by entitling the next flowchart Cerebrum 2. And here what we're going to be focusing on is the cerebral cortex. So we've mentioned the cerebral cortex before. Whenever you think of cortex in any anatomy, think of the outside. So this is the outside portion of the cerebrum. And this is shown in figure 49.16. Take a look at this figure as we go through the different regions of the cerebral cortex. So the cere cerebral cortex contains four regions of interest for us. And let's break them down like the following. The first region to understand is the frontal lobe. So the, this part of the brain will contain several different lobes, and the frontal lobe is of importance to us because this is where we're going to find what is known as the motor cortex. And that motor cortex is going to be in charge of controlling skeletal muscle. So the frontal lobe contains within it the cerebral cortex portion known as the motor cortex that controls skeletal muscle, thus the name motor cortex. The frontal lobe also contains another cerebral cortex known as the prefrontal cortex. And here, this cortex, this region of the brain, of the cerebrum specifically, is in charge of very important decision making. So these decisions that you make, whether they're poor or wise, are based off of the prefrontal cortex's influence, and also planning ahead is also based off of the prefrontal cortex. So this is a region of the brain uh, of great interest to people who are studying adolescent development, seeing how the adolescent mind turns into the adult mind and progresses its understanding of decision making like an adult and planning like an adult. Um, very much important for college students as well because we are trying to improve our prefrontal cortex function, hopefully. In addition, the frontal lobe contains Broca's area. This is a very famous part of the brain named after the person who discovered it. Many psychology courses cover the idea of the Broca's area because this part is in charge of the motor speech. So the actual movement of your mouth and your tongue and your overall muscles associated with talking are going to be controlled by the Broca's area. So I like to think of this as the area in charge of talking, of speaking coherently and correctly, and that's going to be governed by the Broca's area. So these are three parts of the frontal lobe that are important to understand as an overall part of the cerebrum. Now, in addition to the frontal lobe, there's also the temporal lobe. So let's take a look at what happens here. The temporal lobe of the brain contains two different, uh, one cortex and another area that we should understand. The temporal lobe contains the auditory cortex. So you can already imagine what this is in charge of. This is in charge of hearing. And it also contains a different area called Wernicke's area. Again, named after the person who discovered it. Also a very important part of many psychology courses. This is in charge, this part of the brain, that is, is in charge of language comprehension. So what often happens is students confuse the two, Wernicke's and Broca's. Make sure you have the distinction clear. This is understanding speech, and this is doing speech, much like the rest of the frontal lobe is associated with doing things, actual actions. This is comprehension and understanding, and it makes sense that it's next to the auditory or near the auditory cortex as well, which is in charge of hearing, because what good is language comprehension if you can't hear what is being spoken? So it's a good, nice understanding of arrangement here. So that's our frontal lobe, temporal lobe, two more to go. We also have within this part of the brain the occipital lobe. This part of the brain is going to have the visual cortex, and you can already probably guess what this brain structure is involved in. The visual cortex receives and analyzes visual information. Receives plus analyzes visual info. So remember how I said that perception is happening in the brain. Your eyes do the job of looking at things, but your brain specifically, the occipital lobe, specifically the visual cortex of the occipital lobe, understands what you are seeing. The color is red on this writing and the background is gray. That understanding and analyzing happens at the visual cortex, whereas the eyes are the things, the tools that see red and see gray, and the interpretation happens at the brain. 
In addition, the occipital lobe will contain the visual association areas as well. Visual association cortex, I should say. Visu visual associations cortex, this is going to be going hand in hand in function with the visual cortex. This is going to be the important in combining images. So this part of the brain combines images. So you see a scene, let's say, outside. You see a car, you see a tree, you see a road. All of that stuff is combined correctly in this visual association cortex. And then it also allows you to recognize objects. So here we also have object recognition. So both of these work hand in hand within the occipital lobe. Think seeing over here, understanding and visualizing things are happening within the occipital lobe and my voice is being heard through the temporal lobe, the auditory cortex, and it's being comprehended through the Wernicke's area. Okay, And I'm using my Broca's area to speak and talk to you. So let's finish off the lobes that we're using, uh, or looking at I should say, and also using of course the parietal lobe is the last one here. The parietal lobe is going to have the following cortex. It will have the sensory association cortex. This is going to be involved in integrating sensory information. So it integrates, makes sense of, in other words, anything that you sense. So it takes sensory information, let's say a hot uh, surface or a, a rough surface, and understands it at the sensory cortex, at the sensory association cortex, and then also the parietal lobe will contain the somatosensory cortex as well. This part of the parietal lobe is going to be the one that actually interprets information. This is going to interpret, interpret, and this is going to interpret sensory info. It's going to interpret uh, sensory info specifically that's coming from the skin. Um, and it's overall going to give you an idea of your body's awareness gives you an awareness of where you are, essentially. So that's a big idea here. So we interpret um, the sensory information. Let me spell this correctly. Interpret. There we go. Interpret sensory information here. And then we're going to make sure that we understand where we are also through the somatosensory cortex. So we have lots of functions in this very important part of the brain. Um, a good way to understand these functions and how they're represented is to uh, look at what is known as a, as a body part representation. This is a very common representation, a visual scheme that is seen whenever you're studying the brain and its associated functions. Um, the body part representation in figure 49.17 does a good job of this. 49.17 takes a look at the primary motor cortex and it also the primary somatosensory cortex and does the following. It basically takes those two regions and does this. The neurons that are arranged in this body part representation, they are arranged in such a way that they are going to represent. So they're arranged according to the part of the body that generates sensory input, that generates sensory input, or receives the motor commands. So it's a very sort of weird looking figure. If you look at it at first, you have you know, these all these different parts of the body from the toes to the mouth to the lips to the eyes, all of those things are represented. Each body part is represented in figure 49.17. But the reason why it's represented the way it is is because it's showing you a primary motor cortex, let's say, and the neurons that are associated with moving the leg or the neurons that are associated with moving the arm. All of those are arranged in a particular manner on this primary motor cortex that is in control of skeletal muscle in this body part representation. Same thing can be said for the other part of the representation in this figure, which is the somatosensory cortex. Take a look here. The somatosensory cortex interprets sensory information from the skin. 
that's basically going to be a body part representation of the finger and how much it can sense and the arm how much it can sense your fingers basically are represented greater in this body part representation because they can differentiate between soft and rough whereas let's say the back of your leg has a much more difficult job of differentiating between fine differences in uh, whatever the information, sensory information is coming from the skin. So that gives an overall understanding of the four regions within the cerebral cortex. This is a major, major part of the brain that's in charge of very important things, as you can see here. Um, we're going to conclude this lecture by looking at the rest of the brain, some of the other parts that can be highlighted outside of the cerebrum.